Divine timing was definitely at work when I walked through the arches of the ashram and immediately bumped into Sadviji. She opened her arms to embrace me and instantly knew why I was there. She laughed and said, great timing as she took the velvet sack of goodies from my hand. Let's have Pujaya Swamiji bless these for you right now, she said. Follow me to the garden. He will be there soon to meet with some devotees. We walked into a sweet garden and sat under the little hut-like structure on neatly arranged rugs. When we saw Swamiji approaching, we all began to rise and he quickly motioned for us to sit down. As he sat down, he waved for me to come forward. I scooted toward him on my knees. He looked into my eyes and he presented me with a delicate, beautiful, sacred Rudraksha Mala and he placed it over my head. I was beyond surprised to be receiving such a precious gift. Sadviji then handed him my velvet pouch. While he held it, he closed his eyes with a serene look on his face, and he chanted, and in his clear, pitch-perfect voice, before giving it back to me, in my mind, I took a snapshot of the moment and placed it in my heart. Being in the presence of Swamiji felt like standing in front of a spiritual furnace. He just simply radiated love and goodness, kindness and wisdom, and I was hopeful that the blessings he bestowed on these gifts would be transported back to my friends and family as they wore their beads. As Sadviji and I walked back to her office, she invited me in. She motioned to me to sit on the couch and asked if I was hungry. Starving, I said. She picked up her phone and in Hindi placed an order. 10 minutes later, two trays arrived with steaming plates of rice, dal, veggies, and chapatis. As we ate, I timidly asked her if she would share with me exactly what kind of healing she received when she first entered Ma Ganga. I really wanted to understand what kind of pain and suffering she had experienced. I had, of course, Googled her, and I discovered that she had grown up Jewish in LA, graduated from Stanford, earned a PhD in psychology, and now, today, she was a revered holy woman who ran the largest ashram in Rishikesh. Holly, it's a long story, but I'm happy to tell you a very short version. Sadviji lifted the tray of food off her lap, placed it on the dark, lacquered coffee table in front of us. She closed her eyes for more than a second while she gently placed her hand on her heart and then said, Holly, as a child, I was sexually physically and emotionally abused by my birth father. And even though my stepfather came along and was loving and kind and adopted me, the damage was done. I suffered for many years from eating disorders, addiction, and depression. I was placed in hospitals and treatment centers many, many times, sometimes for as long as four months. From the outside, my life looked pretty good. My parents gave me everything, including summers and an exclusive summer camp in the Swiss Alps. I was a great student, I had plenty of friends, but mostly as a teen and a young adult, I was tortured by my addictions and obsessions. She stopped to take a few bites of food. I reminded myself to breathe. This was not the story I was expecting to hear. My essential nature is one of a scientist which led me to study psychology to try and get a handle on my behavior. I would discover ways to manage and control my self and my addictions and they would work for a while. But eventually, I would spiral back down into a pit of pain and self-loathing. The only reason I came to India was to accompany my then husband who was on a mission to find his guru. At that time in my life, I had no interest in spirituality. I was not a seeker, and honestly, the only thing about India that intrigued me was the access to interesting vegetarian food. One day, while my husband was out hunting for his guru, I took a wrong turn heading back to my hotel and ended up here at this very ashram. A series of very wild and unusual things happened to me, which I'll share with you at a later time. But once I met Swamiji, I quickly knew in every cell in my body that I had found my true home here in Rishikesh 
at the Parmath Nikitan Ashram. It was Swamiji who advised me to give up my pain to Ma Ganga. It's hard to describe in words what happened on that day 23 years ago, but that's when I surrendered my pain to the river. In many ways, I experienced Ma Ganga as an actual goddess, and I merged with her essence and became one with all that is. I felt the waves outside of me and inside of me, and I lost track of time. My mind became nonverbal, and I was part of an undulating divine canvas of color and energy and serenity, and it was beyond anything you could ever imagine. We sat in silence for a bit. My food grew cold. My arms were buzzing as I absorbed her story. I wanted to say something, the right something, but words evaded me. Holly, she said, what happened to me is also possible for you. To have your own experience of Sadviji, you can view two amazing videos in which she shares her wisdom on connecting to the higher self and overcoming sadness and depression. These are part of the 10-part Healing the Heart Yoga video series that you can access today for free right now when you order my book. Please visit thelovebeef.com for all the details.